break. It's at long last here, but the racing news, well, it never stops. Hey, a good Saturday morning to you, and welcome to Kokopo Speedway's Lap Time Live, brought to you by Kokopo Casino. Racing radio here on Outlaw Country, AM 1400. I'm your host, Mike Stanhope. Thank you for joining us this morning, Fourth of July weekend, and we offer our thanks again to those who served and those who have served, and we certainly hope you're enjoying the weekend with family and friends. Well, lots of excitement out at the Diamond in the Desert last night, but not the kind that anyone had anticipated. A severe monsoon storm that blew in late afternoon, absolutely deluging the speedway grounds, putting major portions of the track and parking lot underwater, ran turning the County 15th Access Road into an absolute quagmire. Well, safety being of paramount concern for both fans and the competitors, Kokopo Speedway Management was forced to cancel that event. At its peak, somewhere around an inch of rain fell on the Speedway grounds and vicinity in just 15 minutes. Sometimes, yeah, Mother Nature wins. And again, Kokopo Speedway offers up both its apologies, but also its thanks to all the folks who wanted to be there last night for the 4th of July demolition derby and were who, who were so understanding about the decisions that had to be made. So we move ahead, we put that behind us for the time being, and we've certainly got some great memories from the first half of the season at Kokopo Speedway to talk about. And joining us a little bit later on this morning to talk about that action, the season to date, and what is to come in 2014, Randy Haft with N2 Photographics and the Yuma Sun and YumaSun.com. Some familiar names have stayed strong throughout 2014, but we've also seen some new names and some new competitors coming to the fore, and We'll be talking about all of that in just a few minutes. With the season now fully into summer break and to set the stage for the conversation to come, we start this morning with a review of the top of the standings in each of the five divisions that have provided so much exciting action throughout the year in the 2014 Kokopo Speedway Racing Series. And first in the IMCA Modifieds, it is Yuma's Bobby Horton still on top of the standings, 356 total points, a six-point lead on the man sitting in the number two spot, Imperial California's Land. Murray. Sitting in the third position, sit six points back of Murray. It is Summerton's Ty Rogers with Yuma's Doug Rivera, Bill Miller in the number five spot, and Brawley's Russell Allen in the number six spot. Taking notes of Allen as he picked up his first win in close to two years, a last race out, which was two weeks ago. Next in the pro stocks, Brent Asher, out of Westmoreland, California, on top of the standings in the pro stocks and of all the divisions, Kokopo Speed way, what might be considered the safest lead in the standings, a 13-point advantage over Yuma's Joe Haynes, driver of the number 17Z. Steve Anthony, Brett Samala, and Hamul California's Steve Jonas round out your top five there. Next in the Fisher Automotive Street Stocks, it is Chula Vista's Manny Baldivia still on top of the standings, a seven-point margin over Yuma's Adolfo Noriega with Yuma's Joey Essery in the number three spot. Jimmy Davey, driver of the a number 144 and coming off of his first career street stock win, he sets number four in the standings with Captain Henry B rounding out your top five. On now into the RV World IMCA Sport Mods where Yuma's Timmy Reese, driver of the number 38 machine continues as your season points leader, one of the tightest of the points battles so far in 2014 at Kokopo Speedway just a two point gap over the man sitting in the number two spot, Yuma was Josh Wood, driver of the J11. It's Holtville's Chris Toth in the number three position with Brawley's Cody Daffern coming off of his sport mod win in the number four spot and Yuma's James Dupree rounding out your top five there. And finally in the Napa Auto Parts IMCA hobby stocks, well, another another close one with Yuma's Brent Wofford, driver of the number 27 in the number one position, a two-point advantage over Craig Ebert. Ebers with the win last time out at Kokopo Speedway. That race has been tight all year, promises to be tight as we look forward to the second half of the season when we get back at it in late September. It's Yuma's Brian Johnson in the number three position with Yuma's Jason Bashirs in the four spot and Yuma's Leonard Manos rounds out your top five there. And that's the way it all stands as again we are officially into the summer break anticipating the resumption of race action at Kokopo Speedway in late September out at the Diamond in the Desert. 
time now to bring in Randy Haft with N2 Photographics and the Yuma Sun and YumaSun.com as we both look back this morning and also look ahead. And Randy, good morning to you. <laughs> good morning, Mike. How you doing? Hey, having a having a good one, Randy. Always great to talk racing with you here on Lap Time Live. Racing? No, 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 no. We're going to talk soccer today. You World are? Cup. Yeah. World Cup? Hey, oh, yeah. Who, who's your money on at this point? Well, I don't know. Probably Argentina. But I know there's a lot of stock car guys out there, a lot of dirt track, circle track raiders that are, that are watching the World Cup. <laughs> <laughs> so let's have a moment of silence for the USA. Okay, that's enough. Okay, I'm done. Uh, somebody else was, uh, I was talking to somebody the day saying about uh, a driver in our series right now, I won't name, was talking about making the move up to uh, IMCA Modifieds, and he made the comment, oh, there's too much drama up there. Really? Have you watched the World Cup? That thing is packed with drama. It, IMC modifies don't compare, don't even compare. Yeah, anyway. not 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 too close on that. And uh, well, we we don't see the uh, flops and the other stuff that we see at the World <laughs> Cup. So no. Got, anyway, got got a theme you would put on the uh, season so far, Randy? The theme? Uh, don't count your eggs before they hatch. I don't know. Uh, anything can happen on any any given night. Uh, look at look at the last weekend. The last weekend before the break. I mean, Russell Allen gets his first win in like you said, almost two years. Uh, uh, Cody Daffron wins. I mean, uh, it's it, uh, uh, Jimmy Davy gets his first street stock win. Of course, I think everybody knew that was going to happen sooner or later, but. Uh, you don't know. I mean, you walk in that gate each night, you don't know what's going to happen, I swear. One of, one of the great things about going out and checking out all the action, we're going to talk about some of the uh, up-and-comers and some of the other uh, developments we've seen. But uh, let's go division by division uh, okay. real quick, starting with the uh, IMCA Modifieds. Takeaways within that division, which looks to be a dogfight all the way through to the end of the year. You mean the drama division? The yeah. drama division. The drama division. Uh, what, you know what sticks out of my mind? What I see, what really sticks out is that there have been five different feature event winners in that division. Uh, you got Lance Murray, Ricky Thornton Jr., Bobby Horton, Ty Rogers, and of course Russell Allen. Uh, I think there's a lot. It's, it's coming into a, a real sense of parody there. Uh, you don't know, like I said, from one night to the other who's going to win a feature event. I think it's funny that Lance has his, he's got three wins on the season, but not one of them is with his new car. <laughs> so. You know, that was an interesting uh, choice by Lance, considering he was coming off a win, yeah. parked the car that he last went to victory lane yeah. with, and then brought out the new one. Yeah, I, uh, I'm sure he knows he knows what he's doing better than I know what he's doing, but I mean, I, that, that really surprised me, but uh, uh, that's a guy you're going to have to keep a real close eye on. He's only eight points, or was it six points behind Bobby, right? Yes. Uh, that that definitely is still up for grabs. And, you know, if he runs into a lot of trouble and if Bobby should have a little... Should, well, of course, only one race left in the IMC national season. For the national season. But as far as this track championship, we're going all the way to December. Anyway, uh, there's a lot, long way to go before that one's decided. Well, and we'll have the fall series that'll come yep. into play as yep. well, and uh, for a guy like Russell Allen, who who would have to have lots of bad stuff happen to the guys out front of him, that fall series could be of a lot of interest. That's how Greg set that up. You know, it was a, it's a redemption. If you didn't, your uh, regular season or your Coca Paw Speedway Racing Series uh, season didn't go as exactly as you hoped, you've got a chance to still win a championship, and that's, uh, what is it, five races, six races, whatever it is? Uh, yeah, looking at five or six five again or six over, races, the, over yeah. the course of that's the That's a mini-series, and uh, you got to have your stuff together to win that mini-series as well. Two other names uh, just wanted to uh, make note of uh, within the uh, ranks of the Modifieds. Charles Hunt uh, <laughs> coming back, and coming back fairly strong uh, after the rollover accident a uh, few weeks ago. Another driver uh, showing some speed and running at the front and, and maybe looking for a breakthrough as well when we get to the second half, Imperial Steve McCullough. Uh, you know, uh, I was going to say, it's surprising me, it has surprised me so far that Steve McCullough has not won a race. Uh, that's that's just very, very uncharacteristic of him. Uh, I think the law of averages are going to catch up with Charles Hunt. Uh, I mean, uh, he's he's there. I mean, he, he won his heat race coming back from that wreck. Uh, he's smooth, he's calculated, he stays out of trouble. Uh, when he got... When he was rolled over, that really wasn't his fault. You know, I'm just, uh, I'm not saying it was anybody's fault. I'm just saying that it just is one of those things that happened. One of those racing One of those things, yeah. But uh, yeah, Charles is very strong. Steven's very strong. Uh, what really surprises me, and don't, anybody out there in, in Radio Land, don't take this wrong. You got Doug Revere and Bill Miller sitting fourth and fifth in the standings. Holy cow. Consistency there, Consistency. there at the end. Yeah. I mean, who would have thunk it? <laughs> 
And David White, one other name, potentially uh, somebody to be looked at hard when the uh, fall series kicks off. Yes, uh, Reverend David White. Yes, uh, I mean, uh, he shows uh, improvement every time out. I know he doesn't think so, but uh, uh, I would not put my money, I would not count David out as, as far as being able to win a feature event before the season's all over. He's, he's, uh, he, he gets more comfortable in the car, it seems like, every time you watch him. Um, and he's strong. He, I mean, and I think <laughs> he won't. He'll never tell you this, but I, I'm pretty sure uh, he's uh, pretty much given up his pro stock days. I mean, he's liking this modified stuff. And and that heat race when uh, not all that long ago, uh, right. you could tell that did right. some big things for his confidence. Oh, oh it was it was huge. He's well, a good guy. Oh yes. Let, let's move into the uh, pro stocks. The uh, the story there. A much simpler one when you get right down to it. <laughs> simpler? Can't get any simpler, can it? <laughs> Holy cow. I mean, uh, you got Brent Ashurst. Is, uh, please, nobody, like I said out there, don't take any offense, but Brent is just driving away with it. He's got one, two, three. He's got five feature event wins. Uh, he's he he's like he likes to flex his muscle. I mean, he can he's got a good car, solid car. You talk about a guy that does his homework. Oh, he is he is he's dialed in. Every, well, I shouldn't say every time, but uh, he's um, nothing catches him by surprise. Let's put it that way. Of course, Joe Haynes capable of uh, ripping off a big string of his own when they hit the setup. Joey, Joey, Joey. I swear. Uh, that guy, like I, I said before the last race, he needed to really step up and get and have a good night the last time out, and he didn't uh, because he was he was close. He's still close. Just just uh, 13 points. In, if you don't know racing, 13 points is like the Grand Canyon as far as you know catching somebody. Uh, but uh, Joe's got the the potentials there. I mean, he's a good driver. He's smooth, hard driver too. And then in spoiler position, uh, perhaps mm. as much as anybody, uh, since he's not competed in all ten of the races so far this, eve, uh, this year, uh, but into victory lane last time out, Brett Samala took a big swing at it in terms of making yeah. some changes to yeah. his car. Well, you know, you, you mentioned a second ago the, uh, the the fall series. You got Brent Ashers, you got Joey Haynes, you got Steve Anthony, and you got Brett Samala, and of course Steve Jonas from over in San Diego. Uh, that little mini series could be really fun to watch. You know, starting at zero, and that's, that's going to be fun. Entertaining every time out. Yep. Fisher Automotive Street Stocks. Uh, yet another huge Donnybrook Bruin. Oh, Lord. Street Stocks. <laughs> <laughs> that one, uh, that's just crazy. Um, I'm, I'm looking at the standings, and... Uh, uh, if Jimmy hadn't had so much trouble early on, he'd be right there in the hunt. And Joey Essery, who I think we talked about last time I was on the show, he's, yeah. he hadn't finished worse than third, and I think he might have uh, broke that little spell, but he's still in the hunt. I mean, like I said, 17 points is a lot of points, but a lot can happen between now and December. But uh, Manny and uh, Manny Baldivias and uh, Adolfo Noriega... What can you say? He's about five wins for Manny so far this yeah. year, four for Adolfo. And, and talking about Essary's consistency, uh, nine top fives yeah. uh, out of the uh, ten races so far this year, yes. both Baldivias and Noriega, uh, both with ten top fives. But uh, that says a lot about uh, how far Joey Essary has come. Yeah, I mentioned, I said a little bit ago, I said somebody was smooth and calculated and so forth. Joey is smooth. He stays out of trouble. Um, I don't know. Uh, he's going to be there. I'm, I'm telling you right now. He's going to he's going to get a win for the season's over. RV Mark my Wor words. RV World IMCA Sport Mods. Sport Mods. One of the tightest of them all. Yes, I love this race. Um, yeah. It's turning into a star division. <laughs> the speedway. Star division. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Timmy Reese, Josh Wood, Chris Toff. Toth, however you say his last name, uh, Cody Daffern, James Dupree. I mean, uh, this Reese versus Wood thing is turning into a real talk about drama. There's a lot of drama there. Uh, Timmy's hanging on to a two point lead now after the last race. Uh, I don't know. It's a. Uh, I really, I'm not going to say who's going to win that division, to tell you the truth. I mean, that, that's, that is way too close to call. Yeah, uh, indeed, a, a difficult one to try and make any sort of predictions on. And again, as we go down further into the standings, other guys who have been showing step-ups this year. Yeah, well, look at Cody. Cody, I mean, Cody's like hot and cold. I mean, he's, he can run real smooth one night, and then one night everything's like the, like the doors are falling off. But uh, he, he had his act together the last time. I knew it was in him. Just uh, it's in the genes, actually. I mean, that whole family has got... Every, Race and Daffron family. Race and Daffron, I swear to God. Uh, uh, James Dupree, and they got down the blow. You got Sean Kalins, who won a main event here a while back. I don't know what happened to him after that. Uh, Shannon Muhammad, he's coming on. You know, uh, you got Keith Smith hanging out in that division. It, it's uh, it's pretty cool. 
uh, it's uh, been wonderful to watch the development of all of those drivers yes, and, yes. and the way that division continues yes. to grow. Just just absolutely fun to watch. How many cars did we have last year, Mike, in that division? What, six? There were, there were more than one occasion uh, where, yeah, we were looking at six cars yeah. on track and we're consistently uh, above 10, 12, uh, uh, more than that. So you got races. 15 drivers in the point standings, I mean, or 16 drivers in the point standings. That, that's, uh, that says a lot. Yes, it does. Uh, that, that, that's turned into a real fun division. Finally, let's talk Napa Auto Parts IMCA hobby stocks. <laughs> <laughs> the, the back and forther of them all. Oh, man. Uh, Craig Ebers and uh, Brent Wolford. Uh, I don't know what to say. I haven't already said about those guys. They're fun to watch. Uh, Craig, is, Craig is like a little uh, little soap opera in himself. I mean, keeping his car together. He mentioned he made that comment a while back about I'll put some more bailing wire and duct tape on it, keep it going. I mean, and then he wins the last main event. I mean, if there's anybody determined, I know Brent's determined to win this thing, but it, uh, Craig's in a whole class by himself. I mean, he's, he's just and he's loving it. And he goes about it in such a low key way. Yeah. He's, I mean, he's like, I think he's he's got it. He understands it. It's a lot of fun. And you talk to him afterwards, win or lose, he's all smiles. He's just happy to be there. I mean, he, uh, not don't get me wrong, Brent. Brent's pretty much the same. I think Brent's a little bit more serious about it, if you know what I mean. But uh, Craig, Craig's just a, he's, he's, a, he's a fun to study. He's, he's a fun study, I guess you could say. Both would obviously uh, be considered uh, threats for the fall series as well. But a couple of other names uh, pop up to mind. Uh, Jason Bashir's Leonard Jason Manos, Bashir. and yes. Amy Teague. Can't wait to see what Leonard Manos brings back for the second half. I, uh, that's, that's the word on the street. He's bringing back a car. I don't know. If he does, uh, that's going to be fun to watch. If it's anything like the car he had that he totaled, uh, or was wrecked, I should say. I shouldn't say he totaled it. Uh, Jason Bashirs, um, Amy Teague won a main event. Don't know what's happened to her since then, but she's uh, she's won a main event and she she dominated in that race. I just don't know what what's what what happened after that. Matt Sharar, I'd love to see him get back and get his act together. I mean, he's a good hard charger. Uh, it's a great division. I mean, uh, you, right now I'm looking at the point standings. There's 11 guys in there. I don't know. Uh, I know they all haven't been there on the same night, but. Uh, uh, Craig wanted to. Uh, Craig, Greg wanted to build this into a nice competitive uh, IMC hobby stock division. I think it's a well on its way. Yes. Uh, watching these guys race for that win, uh, and, and again, no no insulting to anybody else, but Brent Wolford and uh, Craig Ebers, they're putting on a really good show out there. Yeah, that that one's been guaranteed entertainment yes. every time yes. on track. Yes. We're talking with Randy Hay from N2 Photographics, the Yuma Sun, and YumaSun.com here on Kokopah Speedway's Lap Time Live, brought to you by Kokopah Casino. No, Ed. We'll be back with more in just a moment. Food City announces an incredible three-day sale now through Sunday. Watermelons, five pounds for only a dollar. Seventy-three percent lean ground beef, just two twenty-nine a pound, sold in the value pack. Doritos tortilla chips, a dollar sixty-nine a bag. Food City drinking water, just a dollar ninety-nine a case of twenty-four. El Pato hot sauce, three cans for ninety-nine cents. Tecate beer, twelve pack, twelve ounce cans, just eight ninety-nine. Thank you for shopping at Food City, the store with low prices when you need them. Outlaw Country streaming live. Just visit us on the web at outlawcountry1400.com and click on the Listen Live button. It's easy. You'll find DJ's bios, photos, and you can also get the latest human news from Jennifer Blackwell and entertainment news, too. We also have fun contests. Check us out today. That's outlawcountry1400.com. Streaming live anywhere you have internet access and speakers. Classic country, your country. Outlaw Country. What exactly is a public nuisance? Well, that may differ a little from person to person. Some people might say it's a front yard full of weeds three feet high. Some people might see three feet weeds and think, what a beautiful expression of Mother Nature. Some people might say it's a 74 burnt orange murky bobcat on blocks in a driveway with visible rust and a back fender that's only this much off the ground. Some might see that bobcat and think, what an interesting weekend hobby that person has. All right, so there's differences of opinion. But when you absolutely, positively can't stand the sight of something one minute longer, such as excessive storage of junk or a housing code violation, or you're concerned there's a condition that could spread over to your property, then it might be time for a call to the Public Nuisance Hotline, also known as the Anti-Ugly Ordinance Hotline. That number is 373-4515. 373-4515. Call it, and we'll have one of our code enforcement officers check it out. 373-4515. The City of Yuma Anti-Ugly Ordinance Ordinance Hotline, 373-4515. Every Monday and Saturday, it's bonus gift days at Yoka Casino. Earn 50 points. 
playing your favorite slots or table game on Monday or Saturdays and receive a special bonus gift. Limit one gift per patron per day. Points must be earned that day to qualify. See the Players Club for more information or call 1-800-23-SLOTS. It's bonus gift days at Cocopa Casino. Live the rush. Visitors from all over the world travel to Arizona and Southern California for many types of recreation. The BLM, Yuma Field Office, wants to remind all public land visitors of the dangers associated with any military or mining type of ordnance or explosives. The Desert Southwest has a rich cultural and historic past that includes numerous contributions relating to a military presence that supported settlement of the West, desert training, and weapons development. This military presence dates back to the 1800s. The Sonoran Desert's mineral-rich ground has drawn prospectors and fortune seekers and is still considered a primary location for individuals looking to strike it rich. Evidence of mining history can be seen at nearly every mountain range in the area. When visiting the desert, if you encounter an item with any explosive or potential explosive danger, you are asked to leave the item in place and do not touch it. Also, leave the immediate area the same way that you approached it. Don't activate electronic devices on or near the explosive item. Once you are safely away from the item, mark its general location with flagging, GPS coordinates, or by some other recognizable means. And please, notify the BLM or any appropriate law enforcement agency by the quickest means available. You're listening to Racing Radio with Coca Pa Speedway's Lap Time Live, presented by Coca Pa Casino. Mike Stanhope, your host. Uh, glad to be with you this morning and glad to be joined in studio again by Randy Hape with N2 Photographics and the Yuma Sun and YumaSun.com. And hey, right up both of our alleys this morning, Randy. Uh, some breaking news that uh, uh, I know both of us are very pleased to share, and that is that uh, long awaited. Memorial Classic for the late, great Dick Routenberg. Probably going to be on that second half schedule. That is awesome. I know we just got word about that, and that is a great deal. I know some people have been waiting for that. Uh, I know that Greg has been thinking about it, but he didn't want to, like, rush into it. You know, he wants, he wants it done right. Uh, couldn't be a, a better race to to, uh, to honor somebody. I swear to you. Uh, the, whatever they call it, I'm, I'm thinking Dick and, Dick and Dick Memorial, but, you know, whatever they decide to call it. Uh, great guy. Uh, I don't know how far you want me to go with this, but... but we could both talk about Dick forever. <laughs> forever. Yeah, yeah, true, true. Well, but. looking like that may happen uh, October 25th, we will, of course, uh, keep people advised as planning for that very special event continues to develop. We'll have uh, whatever Greg comes up with. We'll have it in the Yuma Sun. We'll have it at yumasun.com. Uh, of course, you can find it at the Cocoa Pot Speedway website, I'm sure. Uh, but, uh, yeah, just stay tuned. It's going to be a good one. Yeah, going to be going to be looking forward to all of the uh, details about that. You know, we were uh, talking earlier about the step up of new competitors, uh, which kind of transitions me here into uh, well, well, we'll take a NASCAR term here, silly season, since we're now into our own <laughs> break, and and the rumor mill kind of gets going sometimes, and and again, hearing uh, some new cars possibly under construction uh, for some existing competitors, uh, maybe a change or two of driver on a couple of other cars uh, expecting that rumor mill to be active as uh, as the summer progresses yeah very much so i mean uh i was talking to um uh oh darn it i can't his name's escaping my head at the moment uh, jared hall uh he's got into the uh, race car building business and uh, unofficially sorry jared he's got like i think four or five orders of uh, for uh, imca uh, i think street stocks and hobby stocks and maybe, hobby stock, a combination yeah. of both uh that says a lot, and I'm pretty sure one of those is a Daffron car, if I'm not mistaken, which is possibly hearing pretty, something about that. Pretty exciting. Uh, of course, right before we came, went to the break, you had uh, um, uh, Jared White brought out his uh, his IMCA uh, stock car, and I think he. Didn't he win his heat race? Or? Uh, Jordan White, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, got got to the line first yeah. in, in one of yeah. his heats. That looks like it's going to be yeah. a stout car. And I think he half. finished fifth in the main, or yes. something like that. I mean, uh, that says a lot right there. Of course, he's he's a. I think I think he's got he's got the natural ability, and he's got a good car underneath him now. That's going to be fun to watch. Um, I don't know. I don't I haven't heard any other uh, rumors. Have you? That'll that'll be one for us to continue to track as uh, yeah. as things go along. Yeah. Uh, potentially the return of a couple of drivers we haven't seen uh, for quite some time too, which would be really cool. For example, uh, perhaps Mister One Pat Stubbs. Is that right? I have not heard about Pat. I'm, I'm out of the loop on Pat, but if he comes back, that he's a good. He's a steady. 
very calculated, very smart driver. I'd like to see him out there. Is that in an IMCA stock car? That would be uh, back in an IMCA stock car. That would be good to see. He's a, he's a good guy. And he was one who was uh, close to breaking through before he had to temporarily suspend his racing operation. Yeah, yeah, he was. He was. He was running at the front there. Yes, he was. Uh, running, running out of time this morning, but uh, oh. a couple of other things. Yeah, it goes by so darn quick, doesn't it? Yes, it does. Way too fast. What do you have to say? I have one more thing I want to tell you. Okay, well, hopefully the hopefully the summer break goes by even quicker, because I know we're all anxious to get back to action when late <laughs> September rolls around. Uh, hey, open mic to you, Randy. I'm going to squeeze in a vacation there somewhere. Yeah, we, anyway. we'd all like to do that. Um, I, I was checking this morning, just, just uh, running around the Internet, and I, I, I came to my attention that, you know, uh, when we come back from the break, we've got the um, ASCS Lucas Oil ASCS Sprint Car Tour is going to be back to finish out their season. And uh, I thought it was interesting. Is Jason Johnson, who won everything last in 2013. Time, in 2013, yes. he won the Coco Park Cup and all that. Uh, he has not won a main event yet this season. I thought that was kind of interesting. Interesting season of transition yeah. for him. Yeah. yeah. And, and cool to be able to look forward to that event uh, when we come back around to their uh, season closers at Cocopa Speedway with the with the cup, again, within reach of a driver, Rico Abreu. Yeah, true. That's going to be fun to watch. And uh, uh, the, the young kid, I uh, uh, can't think of his name. Chris Bell. Chris, yeah, Christopher Bell. He's going to be fun to watch. Uh, back on Jason, uh, he's in second place in the standings, though. He's climbing up, and uh, Brad Loyette from uh, Sunset Hills, Missouri, is 26 points ahead of him. It's going to be a fun, fun national event to watch come to this track. And that, of course, will just get us primed for what's coming in early. Oh, yes, January. sir. Oh, yes, sir. That's going to be a... Oh. That's going to be a historic event for this track. Yeah, a historic event for this town. Yes, no doubt about that. We, of course, are talking about the Winter Heat Sprint Car Showdown, and, of course, details on that will be coming out throughout the summer as well right here on Lap Time Live. Better get your tickets now, people, I'm telling you. Hey, we've got a, a special deal on that, and I'll note that here in just a moment. But first, Randy, want to say thanks for stopping in with us. It's a pleasure, as always, and uh, hope we can do it again a couple of more times during uh, during the summer break. I just got a text. Tim Whitehead's bringing out a hobby stock. Hey, bring them on, bring, bring them on. on. Come on, Timmy, bring that baby out here. <laughs> indeed, indeed. Randy, thank you once again for uh, coming on with us here this morning. No on problem. Lap Time Live. Uh, as we noted in the weeks ahead, we'll be keeping you up to speed on many different activities surrounding the Diamond in the Desert. And among those activities, well, the activities of the individual drivers themselves, as many of the stars of the Cocopa Speedway Racing Series will be on the road throughout the summer. Traveling to tracks throughout the region. In fact, a uh, few drivers on the road right now. Uh, Lance Murray's 19 SB getting set for the Dakota Modified Tour. Uh, Ty Rogers, Dwayne Rogers, both up in the Prescott Valley. And Jason Higginbottom, perhaps over to Pahrump, Nevada, all for action this weekend. And we, again, will be tracking all of the drivers throughout the summer break. Participants from Kokopa Speedway. Have one thing to add there? No, uh, you mentioned Dwayne Rogers. Where has he been? Dwayne taking a uh, little time out, uh, I think setting his program up as much as anything for a possible run at the uh, Super Nationals later this summer. Okay, not to be a uh, whatever a pain in the neck, but uh, he he was he's been racing in Phoenix, but not at our place. I don't understand that. Yeah, I'd like to see him back yeah. on a more regular yeah, basis. Definitely, no, no doubt about that. Hey, we were talking Winter Heat Sprint Car Showdown just a moment ago, and that special deal. Want to talk about advance online ticket sales remain open for the Winter Heat Sprint Car Showdown. Those advance purchases online only also provide you a limited pit pass good from 2 p.m. to 5 p.m. on each showdown event day. That is a limited time offer, so make sure to get in on those tickets soon. You can find details on all of that and more under the special winter heat tab at CocopaSpeedway.com, so make sure you check in frequently for all of the updates on the Cocopa Speedway website. It's where you'll find all of the lowdown on the showdown. And one final note we'd like to pass along this morning, Cocopa Speedway won't Wanting your help, race fans, in making the racetrack experience even better, you can help us to do so by logging into SpeedwaySurvey.com. Again, that is SpeedwaySurvey.com. Fill out a short survey. It's an opportunity for you to contribute your ideas on how to make Kokopa Speedway even more of a diamond. Again, that's SpeedwaySurvey.com. Make sure you do so before July 14th. You'll be entered into a drawing to win a pair of season passes for the big 2015 race season. Out at Coca-Cola Speedway. 
like to say thanks once again to Randy Hafe for taking time out of his day to come in and chat with us this morning. Always a pleasure, Randy. You've been listening to Lap Time Live, presented by Coca-Cola Casino. We'll be back with more next Saturday morning at 11 a.m. here on Outlaw Country, a.m. 1400.